Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and I'm, I'm not quite relaxed. <laughs> I keep getting freaking <laughs> canceled by the uh, landscape. Every time I go to start a video, a different landscaping crew is at a different house. It's quiet now, but I can't predict the future. So uh, anyway, this is Ghost Rider Wolverine Punisher Hearts of Darkness. Um, it popped up on my Comixology. I believe is one of the Comixology Unlimited, which means it's, you know, quote, free. Although this was the cover. And I was getting really triggered because, like, that wasn't the cover. What are you doing? Um, but uh, I think this is actually a compilation of two books. The uh, the sequel, Dark Designs, which I reviewed a few days ago, and then the original. Um, again, I miss Comic Book DB so much. It would be this came out ninety one ish. I if I remember correctly, the summertime, the beginning of the summer. But I I can't pin it down when it came out. But I remember two things. I remember uh, when I heard about it, I was like, what a cash grab. And then when I read it, I was like, oh, that was legit, <laughs> like super legit. Now, one of the things that was funny was this, there's this kind of like a pastel tone to it, which is weird. You get all these like super tough guys and then there's a lot of like pastels and almost kind of like a watercolor tone. So the story is Blackheart, who is uh, created um, by Anna Senti and John Romita Jr. Uh, is now being written by someone who didn't create him, so that it's a little off, but he's got beef with his dad and he wants to take over, so he's effectively hiring or at least enticing Ghost Rider, Punisher, and uh, Wolverine to uh, take Mephisto down. How would they do that? <laughs> it is not clear because, uh, you know, spoiler, they actually take Blackheart down fairly uh, easily, but Blackheart is supposed to be a young, you know, in the cosmic sense, uh, younger character. So, you know, he makes mistakes. He's very angry. He's got daddy issues. Um, so basically, for some reason, I don't know why, I have always absolutely loved this panel. I remember it would pop up in a lot of the publicity for this. Um, and uh, with all the action and all the cool heroes and the devils, this is always the one I remember. I think it was, you know, it's just that classic thing of, you know, the open road and, uh, um, you know, being young and going out there and seeing America. So especially when I was, you know, like 18 when this came out, it was very um, uh, exciting, just this concept. So uh, Danny Ketch, um, uh, Frank Castle, and Logan, I refuse to say James Howlett. <laughs> it's freaking ridiculous. But they can get invited to the sticks. Um, this is one of those things that, okay, so, how do I say this? John Romita Jr. used to care. He used to really care and he used to really try. Um, and that's why I love this stuff. I know you read his stuff on DC and just everyone hates him and I go there and I'm just like, you gotta have money, dude. Like, you don't seem like, like you just, you know, not good with money. Like you've been in this game for 40 years. Dude, just retire, man. Just because this is what you got like on a monthly basis, whether it was him on a monthly or, you know, he did, he started, he started moving up. Once he left Daredevil, he did more, you know, special uh, projects interspersed with monthly comics. And this kind of, this is, you just don't see stuff like this. What you would get is a traced photograph. This is him actually uh, drawing. And uh, so we go to a little boarding house and uh, it, it feels very 1920s. There's like a boarding house. I'm not going to show every single page. They're basically um, uh, all given these offers of things that they would desire or Blackheart thinks that they would desire. Uh, Wolverine is offered the secret of his um, adamantium bones and this is 91, probably written in 1990. So Larry Hama had barely even started unraveling all that stuff in the Wolverine series. So the three heroes are not there to actually get the thing that enticed them, but basically investigate who's obviously trying to trap them. So they all get geared up to go out and uh, they get enticed in their own uh, different ways, offering things that Blackheart thinks they would care about, but he doesn't, he doesn't understand that they're heroes. They care about heroic things like rescuing uh, a girl, protecting the town, and just defeating, you know, an evil like uh, him. So, get some great art here. This is Klaus Janssen uh, inking over 
John Romita Jr. I was reading an old uh, Amazing Heroes interview with him, Klaus Jansen, and he was like on the cusp of like, I'm gonna be the next big thing, I'm not, you know, I'm gonna do my own stuff, and honestly, you know, not everyone is the star of the show. Sometimes their their uh, first best destiny is to make other people look amazing, and that's what uh, Claus Jansen does here. I mean, this arm looks solid to me. This looks like three dimensional. So we get some uh, okay uh, weapons. <laughs> uh, John Romita Jr. was only uh, a year or so away from doing Punisher Warzone, and he got a lot better at weapons. This is kind of. <laughs> Based on a real weapon, and then like just kind of like the balance is off, but whatever, it's fine. We get some uh, uh, cool art, um, and uh, I, I always like when people deal with things, you know, based on their kind of um, experience level. You know, Wolverine's fine with saying, "Okay, yeah, this is a supernatural, you know, son of the devil," but uh, Frank is like, "What is this crap? You think I'm buying into all this mystical mumbo jumbo? Get rid of the hologram, and I'll show you some hidden places inside of you." Oh. Well, that was obviously a callback to something he just said. So since they're heroes and they're dealing with a devil character, they all soundly and roundly reject it because you don't do deals with the devil. To which he's like, oddly hurt. <laughs> he's like, really? Not any of you? Like, not... In... You ever... It's like Shark Tank where the guy comes in and he's like really cocky and everyone's just like, pass, 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 pass. Um... Even you, Lori? Like, Lori's like the soft one, so she always wants to help people out. He, Lori's just like, nah, miss me with this shit. Uh, so he's like, uh, so he's angry, you know? And, he, and he's like, uh, I'm gonna, you know, get my revenge on you. That that thing I threatened, it wasn't just an empty boast. So uh, we find out that the all the townspeople, come on, please look at the screen. This is just fun. <laughs> it's just freaking fun. Wolverine sliding down the banister like okay so all the townspeople are being ensorcelled except for this girl who i think in the second one she ends up having mutant superpowers so maybe that's why she didn't get uh ensorcelled but they're all going down there and then um blackheart has basically set it up where you know he's like um you want to kill me you have to go through all these people he's like you're you're the dark heart you know superheroes you'll go for that type of thing right and of course they won't um but there's a great, uh, the, like I said, the coloring is, I never would have thought to suggest this type of coloring to a uh, colorist to suggest, you know, this uh, evil, you know, uh, ensorcelled crowd, but it, these pastels work really good. Um, there is, the, you know, one of those funny things you always see when somebody's drawing a character that they don't usually do. This is the, um, uh, what was it, the... Uh, Salteris, Texiera. I'm close. <laughs> I tried. I'm close in those pronunciations. Uh, era of uh, uh, Ghost Rider. But that's not quite how the headlights looked. You're, you're just, they're just, uh, you tried. You know, this is, this is before the internet. He probably, oh, speaking of before the internet. Do you remember being in fourth grade and doodling a skull on your uh, book cover? Oh my gosh, the lack of internet access uh, when we get to see Ghost Rider transform is freaking, that is not a skull. <laughs> oh my gosh, like, now what he would have had to do, well, first of all, he's an artist. Any artist should have some sort of skeleton, you know, um, reference at hand, but he, his version of a skull is just the silliest thing. But uh, I really like these two heroes uh, meeting up. I'm not sure if this is their first time. I think they, it doesn't imply it's their first, but they're just kind of chill. He's like, it's too quiet, I know. Wolverine is smoking. He's not allowed to smoke. Quesada took that away. And he's like, uh, maybe it's time we made some noise. Grab a weapon, I'm well stocked, thanks. I carry my own. Bum, 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 no, that, that's just cool. Um, so this, this was actually my first favorite part and um i actually remember i put something similar in the first iron sights movie it, i put something similar in the first iron sights comic in that right before the final big battle 
it wasn't so much exposition as it was like the two people kind of you know everything had just been so crazy and they were just you know going from one thing to another without thinking about it and they basically said you know like why are we here why are we doing this and this is great they're heading to this you know uh, battle with um, Blackheart and uh, uh, I think it's Frank on the left side he goes who are we doing this for and Logan says the kid I don't like seeing kids hurt Frank says you and me both just wanted to make sure before we started wading into this thing that's great stuff um, and he says, it's going to get bloody. I've seen it before. This is Howard Mackey. Now, Howard Mackey was an editor. And whenever an editor went to writing, uh, it was always kind of a little suspect. You'd be like, really? But he was good. I would describe Howard Mackey as the Jay Leno of Marvel comic book writers. Jay Leno was never, like, the cool one. He was never my favorite, but I found myself watching his stuff, even if the guests were trash, he would somehow get like a good show out of it. Whereas Letterman and, you know, the others, um, uh, does anyone remember when Magic Johnson had his own talk show? I freaking watched every single episode of that. I was obsessed with it. Um, with others, even if they were, quote, better hosts, uh, there would be a lot of, you know, variance on the quality. And he's usually, you know, uh, depending on like whatever current events they were riffing on or some uh, great uh, guests. But Jay Leno was always just kind of like solid. And that's how Howard Mackey was. Like, he never really got that much respect. And he got memed to death for the Clone Saga, which go back and read the Clone Saga. It's just fine. It's solid. Um, but uh, I was just really impressed. I mean, there's not only good action bits, and but there's good character bits. There's good, you know, building up. It's not just rush, 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 rush. It's sometimes you just get there and there's a whole, you know, uh, scene of them just going through these thorns and just getting ripped to pieces. And then Ghost Rider, <laughs> I'm sorry, this is that is not a skull. The skulls do not look like that, but he just uh, goes on through. So that's pretty uh, badass. They, they're dropping some hints about Ghost Rider's origin because this is Howard Mackey. He's the Ghost Rider writer. Got that? Obviously, I've been editing this video. I got that right the first time. Ghost Rider Writer. Did it. Um, but come on, look at that skull. <laughs> like, what the, This skull was really taking me out of the story. I was like... Back then, you could be more forgiving because, you know, it might have been like, Honey, where's my anatomy book? I, I got a skeleton guy I got to draw. She's like, no, it's downstairs. He's like, no, I look downstairs. She's like, I don't know how to... I, 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 I got to head to work. And he's like... I'm not going to the library for this shit. I'm just gonna draw a skull from memory. And this is what happens when you draw a skull from memory. But here's again him, you know, once again, he reiterates uh, all the things. Um, oh God, please look at the screen. This is the freaking worst skeleton I've ever seen. Do not draw skeletons from memory. You, it, no, 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 just don't even try it. So they all just reject him again. And then they go uh, fight him, and then he uh, he ends up going down to hell. Ghost Rider follows him to hell and just takes him apart like he's made out of Legos. It's just he just trounces the hell out of him, punches right through his chest. Um, it's just basically, it's like you are hollow. Freaking love that. And then the other heroes show up. They did follow him through somehow. Not really sure how. <laughs> I was. I'm not gonna say I totally disbelieve that he was defeated fairly easily. But again, he's a new or youngish, you know, uh, uh, demon, uh, devil son. So maybe his power levels aren't that amped up uh, yet. He just gets shot with bullets. I love this. I love this line. He says, you dare you think you can stop me with your pitiful weapons, your claws, your guns. And then Frank just says, we'll give it a try. Shoots him a bunch of times and keep trying. Until phonies like you shut up. You can take your edge and shove it. It doesn't exist. No gray area. If I ever had a soul, it's long gone. There is just right, wrong, and punishment. No! So uh, then uh, Wolverine uh, brings it all home. He says, I think the point my friend is trying to make. <laughs> By the way, when John Romita Jr. just has, like, doesn't even draw the skull and just draws a bunch of flame, it works so much better. Um, he says, uh, uh, Logan says, I think the point my friend is trying to make is that we all have our personal limits. 
We may be close to an edge, but it's an edge that we choose never to go over. Too bad you didn't make the same choice. You allowed your father to push your buttons. He played you like a puppet. You tempted, you tortured, you threatened. You became your father. Welcome to the real world, Junior. Got him. So then they just kind of like, oh, jeez, please look at the screen. <laughs> There's no excuse to draw a skull like this. No. <laughs> so then um, uh, this is cool because uh, uh, Mephisto, who... Um, this is all John Romita. John Romita Jr. like totally redesigned Mephisto. God, these moves uh, it's disgusting. But it, he, it, it's a full redesign. And no, it, it's always funny seeing other people trying to draw his redesign. Nobody makes it work but him. But he just ends up, uh, he gives a speech to his son. It's freaking great. He goes, uh, he goes, and you, Ghost Rider, you are an enigma even to me. I sense that it is a puzzle over which we will come together in the future. Okay, and, and Ghost Rider, the series. <laughs> but today is for my son. Time for a father to help him reflect on the lessons learned. And then he reforms him a little, and then just squashes him. He's like, time for me to show him my love. He will learn. Go now, Ghost Rider, but we will meet again. So then uh, uh, all the heroes won. It's a happy ending. This uh, comic is freaking awesome. Oh my gosh. Like, so good. And I, I, just, I remember at the time, just I was just happy. You know, we got the happy ending. Uh, the little girl has been rescued. The town people have become uninsorcelled. Ghost Rider's got his uh, motorcycle back. John Romita Jr. isn't even attempting to draw his skull right there. Thank you very much. Oh, God. He didn't do the teeth. He just didn't even... He didn't, he didn't even do the teeth. Okay. And then he says, uh, Frank says, All this talk about us being close to the edge. What do you really think? Logan just says, who knows? Ghost Rider says, it doesn't matter if there is an edge or if we occasionally cross it. As long as the innocent are protected, our cause is just. Definitely go check it out. And I kind of recommend anything Howard Mackey did from the 1990s. It was, it was all solid stuff. So anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the GoFundMe, the Patreon, and the Indiegogo finding original content and an original lawsuit. Jawbreakers Grand Bazaar. Expendables go to hell. And I will have more new comic reviews up all this week. Thanks, bye.